Tonight, a story that raises some serious issues for the medical profession. Does the system of self-regulation overseeing surgeons in Australia work? And is that system open to abuse? Our story focus on, on, focuses on a French spinal surgeon who arrived in Townsville in 2003. His problems began when he moved into private practice. Within a short time, he found himself the subject of repeated anonymous complaints and medical audits. The ongoing scrutiny undermined his capacity to practice. And eventually, his local hospital decided that without the support of his peer group, he could no longer operate. He became deeply depressed, contemplated suicide and ultimately left Australia. The question is, how did this happen? Was he deserving of scrutiny or was his treatment professional harassment? Reporter Steve Kinane has been trying to answer those questions. Dr Richard Emery has what seems like an idyllic lifestyle. He and his family live 10 minutes from the beaches of the French Riviera and 30 minutes from the ski fields of the French Alps. But 12 months ago, it was a different story. A series of complaints by a group of senior surgeons in North Queensland drove the French doctor out of Townsville and drove him to the edge of taking his own life. One day I came home and I got a text message saying, take care of the kids. And I, I thought he was gone for a run. And when I got the message, I understood straight away that he had gone somewhere. Tonight, for the first time, Richard Emery and other doctors speak out about the culture inside the medical profession and how a group of senior surgeons in North Queensland was able to prevent him from making a living in Australia. One surgeon told me directly in private that I should run him out of town. He was doing things twice as fast and procedures the others couldn't do and they, they got terribly jealous. Dr Richard Emery moved to Townsville in 2003 when the city was in need of spinal surgeons. After five years working at Townsville Hospital, he decided to move into private practice. He says then he received a hostile phone call from Dr Eric Guazzo, a local surgeon who was then president of the Neurosurgical Society of Australasia. And he basically said, if you move to private practice, you won't be able to perform surgery in no time. So go back to France. Dr Guazzo denies having had any conversation of this nature with Dr Emery. I ignore what he said and moved to private practice. And after three months, um, I was audited by the Mater Hospital for an, an anonymous complaint saying that my level of complication was far too high. It was to be the first of many audits. Dr John Stokes is a former director of medical services at the Mater Hospital in Townsville. There were complaints about his blood transfusion rate and uh, we audited that and it was normal. Uh, he came to work as a VMO. There were complaints about uh, his use of item numbers and we audited that and it was no more abnormal than other surgeons use. Um, there was uh, uh, complaints about his complication rate so we ordered a year of his uh, surgery and uh, there were nothing out of the ordinary in the hospital related to his surgery. After Richard Emery had passed these audits, another surgeon made a complaint about him to APRA, the national body that regulates all health practitioners. That meant another audit and being placed on conditional registration. The colleagues locally felt that he wasn't, or that they weren't experienced enough to comment on the type of work he was doing, so Richard arranged for that to be undertaken by surgeons who did a uh, similar kind of work. Dr Rob Carew and another surgeon, Dr Brian Ashman, reviewed at least 18 months worth of operations. The data that Richard supplied uh, to us when we reviewed the types of procedures that uh, he was doing, they were appropriate for someone doing a complex spinal reconstructive practice and the complication rate we found was within published and acceptable limits if you're doing that kind of work. So there wasn't an unusual amount of complications? No. But this wasn't good enough for the local craft group of neurosurgeons and orthopaedic surgeons. In February last year, Richard Emery attended a meeting with the group. He presented the results of all of his operations over the previous six months as part of a regular peer review process. So Richard Emery's presentation, did it have an unusually high complication rate attached to what he was saying? No, 
In my view it didn't and that's supported by the view of the two APRA supervisors who had both seen the audit before. Both Dr Richard Emery and Dr John Stokes say they can't recall any major criticisms being raised at that meeting. But the craft group of surgeons used Dr Emery's presentation as the basis for another complaint to APRA. Lateline has obtained a copy of that letter. It says in part... We all feel that Dr Richard Emery's rate of major clinical complication was well above what would be acceptable surgical practice. As a craft group, we have had ongoing concerns with regards to Dr Emery's practice, but the latest audit presentation is deemed unacceptable by us. The letter is signed by nine local surgeons, including Dr Eric Guazzo. One surgeon abstained. Lateline has been told only five members of the craft group witnessed Dr Emery's presentation that led to this critical letter of complaint. Were all the people who signed that letter at the meeting? No. Is that a problem? It's a problem for them. Why? They didn't see the audit, they don't know what's in it, and they didn't have a copy of the audit. Therefore, they can't make a judgement about the audit. Dr Richard Emery is disgusted that four of his colleagues would condemn his work without seeing his presentation. The audit is a private document which are not available. Unless they look at my computer without me knowing, they cannot have access to it. Did Eric Guazzo see your audit? No. Dr Eric Guazzo would not speak with Lateline on camera, nor would any of the other eight surgeons who signed this letter of complaint. A statement from his lawyers said... Dr Guazzo categorically denies conducting any conversations with Dr Emery in 2008 or otherwise in which he made any comments that could be taken or misconstrued as threats. Dr Guazzo has at all times conducted himself professionally and in accordance with his legal and ethical professional obligations. Dr John Stokes believes the audit process was used to target Dr Richard Emery. He wasn't given a fair hearing. He wasn't given help, which you expect out of audit. Uh, in fact, um, the audit that was finally done uh, was used against him in what's called a, the term a sham audit, where audit is used to harm a person. The intention of medical audit is to improve care. And this wasn't used in an attempt to uh, improve care. Despite being appalled by the process, Dr John Stokes had to tell Richard Emery that without the support of his peers, he could no longer operate at the MARTA. If something happened, a patient would reasonably be able to say, well, the hospital and yourself, Dr Emery, were practising without support. So it's an easy thing for doctors to do, to withdraw support and put a person in a regional centre at great risk. So that then opens up the hospital to an insurance claim, does it? Yes. Is that fair, that you can have your fate in the hands of people who potentially are competitors. That's not natural justice. Lateline has obtained an independent assessment of Dr Emery's credentialing, written for the Mata Hospital by Dr John Quinn, a principal advisor to the Council of the Royal Australasian College of Surgeons. The report is highly critical of Dr Emery's peer group. To undertake, assess and monitor spinal surgery at Mater Hospital Townsville requires cooperation, collegiality, peer support and professionalism from all those performing such surgery. Regrettably, these qualities seem to be lacking at your hospital at this time. This seems to be personality driven more so than scientifically or surgically driven. By March last year, Richard Emery had had enough. He'd been subjected to continuous complaints, medical supervision, restrictions on his practice, and now his livelihood was being taken away from him. He headed to the top of Castle Hill and, in his words, was ready to jump. I knew he was running up Castle Hill from time to time and I, I really hoped that he was up there. I really did. Otherwise, I, I'd, yeah. So I drove up there and couldn't see him, I drove up and up and I, and I thought it was, it was a question of time. I, I kept calling him, he wouldn't answer. And I was really hoping it, it wasn't going to be too late. And I found him. I found him and thank God he was, he was just sitting, 
sitting and and I, I told him, I said, it's, it's, it's all okay, we'll just go back home. Just go back home and everything will be fine. Earlier this year, Richard Emery and his Australian family moved to France. For him, life has improved. But the same can't be said for the patients left behind. Michael Johnston was about to be operated on in March last year when Richard Emery's privileges were taken away. It was devastating, beyond belief. You know, I'd waited 17 years to get my life back. We were two months away from it happening and it was taken from me. We were basically the carnage. We were just left behind. Michael Johnston has a rare condition where the body attacks itself, leaving him with a spine that can't support him. I've got six grandchildren. The oldest is 17 years now, and I've never, ever been able to pick, pick them up, ever. Michael Johnston is a designer and an inventor. But these days, he can't stand up in his workshop for more than an hour at a time. I uh, can't live up to my responsibilities with my family. And uh, I've always been a very proud man, what I've achieved in the workforce. And it's all gone. And it's not necessary. And um, nobody seems to care. Richard is the only one that cares. And this one here. After previous operations that had failed, Richard Emery offered to repair the damage for free. And he said, I tell you what, I'm going to perform the surgery for you free of charge. This is my Christmas present to you. No expenses. There have also been repercussions for Dr John Stokes. He believes he's been targeted for speaking out against unfair process. In that same year, um, I was notified to APRA vexatiously on two occasions. There is almost certainly a link somewhere in that. I've had a good long practice in medicine without any complaints about me. and. Um, I suspect there was some ulterior motive of stopping me to be Director of Medical Services. John Stokes was badly injured in a cycling accident that killed his friend, Sue Bell. That accident was cited in a notification against him. So they even tried to allege that you were brain damaged, didn't they? Yes, that was the most hurtful thing of all. A good friend of mine died, who I tried to resuscitate at the roadside. And I survived uh, with major injury, but she died, unfortunately. And that was used against me to claim that I was mentally incompetent and should be deregistered. Since John Stokes recorded this interview, he's been subjected to another complaint, this time to the Minister for Health. Local Liberal MP Warren Ench says he's appalled by what's happened in Richard Emery's case and wants the complaints process overhauled. If it's shown that individuals are doing this and, and, and there's no basis for it, or it's done out of malice, or it's done out of greed, those individuals that have made those allegations need to be held responsible for their actions. Warren Ench was on the parliamentary committee that produced the report Lost in the Labyrinth, which came up with 45 recommendations around registration and support for foreign trained doctors. It seemed to go nowhere with the then health minister, Peter Dutton. Unfortunately, I really got a, I got no real response, you know, other than to say that my concerns had been acknowledged. Now that was in 2014. Since that time, I've now I've written again. I've sent that letter to um, uh, the new minister, Susan Lay, and I've asked her to actually focus on this. First of all, we do need to get a response to those 45 recommendations, and secondly, I was hoping that we could have kept. Dr Emery in Australia, unfortunately, he's, he's left, he's now in France. Even though Richard Emery has moved back to France, he is still under investigation from APRA. Well, first of all, I'd like Richard's name to be cleared, um, just for our own um, serenity of mind. Celine Emery says she knows of other similar cases in other parts of Australia. The other thing is we are aware that some other surgeons, foreign trained surgeons, are in a similar situation and I wouldn't want their families to be in the same situation as 
we went through. The well, Lightline understands the ACCC is currently investigating the case involving Richard Emery. The Commission wouldn't comment on that investigation. We also contacted APRA, the Mater Hospital, the 10 members of the Craft Group and the Royal Australian College of Surgeons for interviews. None was available.